After reviewing the latest inventory data from Realtor.com, it's clear that the housing market is on life support and dying quickly. Check this out. So first, the good news. Inventory levels are significantly better than they were last year on the surface. In fact, inventory of homes available for sale is up 36% year over year. So we have made up some ground. That's good. But we're still nearly 29% below pre-pandemic levels. So we have a large hole to dig out of. But as my old boss used to say, the devil is in the details. So check this out. When you look at the inventory of existing homes for sale and where the inventory lies with pricing and price buckets, this part is super scary. And you don't hear a lot of people talk about it. According to the National Association of Realtors, we actually are down year over year significantly when it comes to homes priced under $100,000. Simply put, there are none for sale. And when you look at homes from one hundred dollars to $250,000, we're only up 12% year over year, not 36%. And when you look at the number of homes available to purchase from two hundred and fifty. dollars to $500,000, we're not up 36%. We're not even up 25%. As you get more into more expensive homes, there are more available to purchase. So let me ask you a question. If you're somebody out there buying million dollar homes, you're probably not watching this. You're probably just out there spending your money, which is good. But if you're like most people and you care about affordable inventory, you have to be really cautious on which information you digest with inventory numbers, because it's clear from this data, and I'm challenging you in your market to look around, do you see affordable homes for purchase? Do you see affordable homes for sale? Tons of them, probably not. You see expensive homes, that's what everybody globs onto. But in fact, affordable homes, specifically homes under a hundred grand, we actually have less of those than we did last year, if you can believe it. But to me, the price buckets and where the existing inventory lies is not the scariest part of this. It's actually in the new listings because you need a new listing in order to add it to the market. And if you don't have many new listings, you're not going to have a lot of active listings. Look at this. So over the last five years, when you compare 2019 to 2024, we're actually down almost 25% in the number of new listings. Scary. But look at the one year change. We're only up 3.6%. That's right, 3.6%. So that means we only have, we barely have more new listings right now, this time than we did last year at this time. But look at the one month change. We're actually down nearly 8% since last month. And last month we were down since May of 2024. So while it looks like we're adding a lot of inventory, when you look at the pipeline moving forward and the pipeline being new listings, we are struggling big time. So unless we add a lot of new listings quickly, I wouldn't anticipate active inventory to continue to increase in a meaningful way to bring down prices. I'm gonna show you an additional data set that illustrates this point. This is that data we just looked at from realtor.com, but put into a graph rather than a chart. So you can see this info goes from 2017 all the way through 2024. And right now, the light blue line are the active listings, the dark blue line are the new listings. So right now, you can see active listings has come up recently, right? We, we were actually in the, back in 2022, we were down at 354,000 units for sale. Now you climb up, we're at 884,000 units for sale. So from the bottom, we have made progress. When you go back and look at 2019 though, before the pandemic, we're still down. You can see before the pandemic, we had 1.2 million homes for sale. But again, look at the new listings. So new listings, when we had inventory to purchase, was averaging about 556,000 units per month. Now look where it is, 387,000 units a month. So again, unless we have an explosion of new listings, I wouldn't anticipate active listings to continue to skyrocket in a meaningful way. And you can't just create listings from nothing. You have to have a new listing to add to the active listings. And a lot of people want to ignore this fact. They're looking at the data saying, look at the active listings, we're up 36% year over year. We're up above pre-pandemic levels in Idaho and Florida and Texas. Yeah, there are probably metros where there is affordable housing for sale, although I don't hear anybody talking about that. But in general, our affordable inventory is wrecked. And overall, the inventory is stalling because new listings 
just aren't increasing like we need them to. Now, many people think we're going to get a lot of active listings from foreclosures or from institutional investors. So let me show you what institutional investors have been doing this summer. This chart represents the total number of acquisitions and dispositions from institutional investors or those investors that own over a thousand houses. We're talking single family houses now. So, and this data is from Resi Club Analytics and Parcel Labs. So diving into this chart, we can easily see that when you scroll down to the bottom, institutional investors in May of 2024, just a few months ago, were not net sellers. I repeat, they were not net sellers. They were net buyers, meaning they're not adding inventory from the market. They're taking it. You can see it right here. Now, there are some that were actually net sellers. Some of them were in certain areas, but overall, they're not. So institutional investors don't seem to be giving us any inventory, there's probably no hope for them giving us inventory in the near future. Now let's talk about foreclosures for a second. Again, a lot of folks have been hoping, wishing, wanting, and downright praying for foreclosures. They hit the market so inventory would explode and they could get deals of their lifetime. The trouble is we haven't seen an explosion in foreclosures. Why is that? Watch this video, you'll find out.